That's a really good. Mm. Really sour. Like your mother's lemon tea. Uh, four donuts and says, Yeah, I have a question. When are you going to play Minecraft multiplayer? Also, a video for the God Gamer to watch. Minecraft speedrunning. The secrets of Minecraft speedrunning. Oh shit. I need some secrets. Highly entertaining, fast-paced, adrenaline-fueled attempt at completing Minecraft, which is killing the Ender Dragon, in the fastest time possible. It is competitive, and the top Minecraft speedrunners will often spend hours a day mastering the techniques and patterns which allow them to complete the game the quickest. You see, there are certain techniques and methods which speedrunners use which allow them to beat the game faster than should be possible. Minecraft speedrunning is very diverse in its categories, but today we're going to talk about the most popular and most competitive ones. But before we get into that, I should explain how a speedrun works, and then I'll tell you about the unique techniques and tricks speedrunners use to beat the game as fast as possible. So let me quickly explain the rules of speedrunning, and the two main distinctions between speedruns. There are general speedrun rules for Minecraft as a whole, which is first of all, the speedrun has to be on Minecraft Java Edition, so sorry Bedrock players, but you guys aren't allowed in the main category. <laughs> the run must also be done on survival or hardcore mode, is. and the difficulty cannot be peaceful, but the speedrunner is allowed to choose between the three other difficulties, easy, normal and hard. They however cannot switch the difficulty once they begin the speedrun. Oh, I didn't to... know that. I was thinking about starting or, or changing to hard once I'm farming the flame elementals or whatever the fuck they're called and then everything else on easy but you can't open right. to land obviously and the world type must be default no super flat or amplified now as for rules about the recording of the speedrun itself you have to be recording the whole run for it to count and you have to show specific things such as the world being generated and loading screens for when you go to the nether etc an in-game timer must be used to time the run, which will account for the differences in loading speeds between computers, and resource packs are allowed as long as they don't give an advantage, and the same goes for mods, so that means mods like Optifine are allowed. Those are the basic rules, there are quite a few more which get quite detailed, as well as category specific rules, but I'm not going to mention all of them, as it would take quite a while. One more thing you should know about speedrunning, is that there are two general categories for all speedruns, not just Minecraft, called Any% percent and Any% percent Glitchless. Any percent means you are able to use bugs, exploits, and glitches within your speedrun, which can lead to significantly faster times. An example of this would be duplicating items in a Minecraft speedrun. Any percent glitchless, however, is the opposite, meaning you yeah, can't use any glitches. This is a proper fucking category, man. Gym. All right. So now I've taught you the basics of speedrunning. Let's talk about the main categories within Minecraft speedrunning. No, get Both the fucking secrets, and man. Glitchless have the same four categories, which are set seed pre 1.9. Set Seed 1.9 Plus, Random Seed Pre 1.9, and Random Seed 1.9 Plus. Set Seed speedruns are where a specific seed is used every time, and the what? seed has been optimized for the speedrun. This means they can learn where all the important things are, such as ores, villages, and even the stronghold. And when I say the seed is optimized, I mean that certain essential features for the speedrun are easily accessible such as the stronghold, which is really close, and also has most of its eyes of ender in it, and the player also knows where all the ores are and can dig straight to them, or structures such as desert temples and villages with valuable items are nearby. Set seed speedruns are all about memorization and perfecting specific techniques, as the speedrunner knows where everything is, he just has to get there as fast as possible. Now random seed speedruns are a bit more interesting in my opinion. Instead improvised. of the speedrunner using a specific seed, they generate a random world every time, meaning they have to adapt to the situation and find what they need. Now one more difference is pre and post 1.9. Minecraft 1.9 featured lots of game changing 1. elements, such as change the combat mechanics, understand. the ender dragon fight was changed slightly, I asked and new items such as shields were introduced. The fucking, In the later um, version of the game, key structures such as villages were changed as well. So well, basically, there are so many differences patches. between post 1.9 versions of the game and pre 1.9 versions that they had to split into different categories. You guys said All that right. the next version So now that we've established the main categories and rules, let me show you how these speedruns work. Let's talk oh, about 1. pre 1.9 set seeds first, within the any percent glitchless category, meaning no bugs or exploits. The record is currently held by the Sizzler with a time of 4 minutes and 48 seconds. 
In his run, he enters a desert temple, where he only opens two of the chests out of the four, knowing that he only needs the items from those two. He then runs to a village right uh, next to the village temple, graphics? where he crafts a golden axe, which actually destroys blocks faster than a diamond one, and also destroys the bookshelves in the village. He then finds a cleric villager to trade with for a single eye of ender. He then makes a small error, accidentally throwing his single eye of ender, as you see, since it's a set seed, the runners know exactly where the stronghold is and they don't need to throw eyes of ender to find one. He digs down to the stronghold, finds the end portal almost instantly, and puts a single eye of ender into the frame to activate it. Uh -huh. You may have noticed that out of the 12 end portal frames, 11 already had eyes of ender, and this is incredibly rare. Specifically, it's a 0 0.0000 that, you get the point chance. Speedrunning seeds are specifically selected on the basis that the end portal frame already contains most of the eyes of Ender. Anyways, he heads to the end and kills the dragon by destroying the end crystals when it gets close enough. For the same category, but for 1.9+, plus, the record is held by Ontricus at a time of 4 minutes and 43 seconds. He starts by gathering some wood and then digging down intentionally. Let's be honest, straight if you don't play the fucking Chad random seed. Making some gold tools, he takes a flint and heads to a nearby desert village where he collects all the chat. village's beds and 10 obsidian to make another portal. However, he does not use that obsidian to make a portal yet, instead, using the water and lava technique to make a portal and enter the nether, as you can see here. Once in the nether, he tunnels straight to a fortress and builds a new portal, which takes him to a specific location in the overworld where he is able to enter a cave and dig down into a stronghold which already has all 12 eyes of ender in the frame. He kills the dragon using bed explosions, as similar to the nether, you cannot sleep in the end and if you try to, the bed blows up doing massive damage which can be used to kill the dragon. Now, onto set seed any percent. Nice secrets, so this bro. time, it's still a set seed, but the speedrunners are allowed to use bugs and exploits. This is where it gets interesting. The record for set seed any percent pre 1.9 is held by the Reaper underscore HK with an in-game time of 3 minutes and 44 seconds. Because of all the glitches and tricks involved in these type of speedruns, the time is mainly measured by in-game time, so time spent when the game isn't opened doesn't count. He starts in a village where he opens a chest full of some useful loot. He then drops the items, save and quits the world, goes back in, and just as he picks up the items, he crashes the game, which rolls the game back a bit, duplicating the items. Once he has du So first of all, Eluna gathers some basic materials and sets some cows on fire for food. He then heads out into the desert to look for a desert temple, or a lava pit which he can make another portal out of. Deserts are really important for these speedruns, as they not only contain valuable loot and structures and easily accessible lava pits, but they also spawn the most mobs at night. In the nether, he finds a fortress and proceeds to a Wait. blaze spawner to collect blaze rods. Back in the overworld, Where he the starts a common speedrun technique of getting enderpels. Basically, he goes to a desert and towers up really high in the sky, placing a bed at the top and sleeping. This sets a spawn point at the top of the tower, and then he can jump down and look for endermen. If he sees any, he looks at them so they aggro him, and then he kills them. And if not, he stores his items in a chest and jumps in lava, and then he respawns at the top of the tower, and what this does is reset mob spawns. That means when he respawns at the top, new mobs will spawn everywhere. The and fuck is this strategy? Until he has got enough ender pills. He then can craft eyes of ender and locate a stronghold. Now, the method used to locate the stronghold is another common speedrun tactic, which is called triangulation. Triangulation basically allows you to line up two eyes or ender throws so that you can roughly estimate where they intersect, which is where the stronghold should be. This is a pretty difficult technique and takes quite it's a It's from the old version. Time. That's so cool once though, though, honestly. He shoots the end crystal arrow to destroy them and kills the dragon once again using the bed method. Now, for random seed any percent glitchless for 1.9+, the record is held by a real Benex with a time of 22 minutes and 23 seconds. The method for this run is quite different for obtaining enderpearls. The run starts off well and he enters a desert temple to get some loot as well as the 9 TNT which will be important later. He finds a village and goes to the nether to get blaze rods and upon returning to the overworld he begins using a new method to obtain the enderpearls. In Minecraft version 1.14.4 when TNT blows up blocks all the blocks will be dropped, as in prior versions of the game, not all blocks dropped when destroyed, some were lost. He uses this to blow up a bunch of village houses in order to obtain a large amount of wood so he said this to make sticks. In, uh, with the sticks, he can trade with a cleric villager for enderpearls. He then also used the triangulation method to find a stronghold, he enters it and kills the dragon with beds. Any percent random seed for pre 1.9 is also held by Illumina, with an in-game time of 7 minutes and 51 seconds. 
The technique for this run is to keep creating a new world until you spawn into one with a village nearby. <coughs> Once he spawns into one with a village, he gets some items and uses the same method to duplicate them a few times. Once he has duplicated them enough, he trades with a villager to get a bow and arrow that draws plenty uh, of eyes of ender and by, by placing an end crystal. Considering how little runs are of this category, I might even attempt it. Okay, so finally, I want to tell you about some of the other types of Minecraft speedruns which aren't that popular or they take significantly longer. First of all, there's all achievements, which means getting every achievement in the game. <laughs> nice secrets. All achievement speedrun. Jesus. Those are pretty contradicting. <sighs> I know that some people do it, but I mean, come on. Those were all the secrets for this time. Only vision, some kind of force in CD. Fade banana. Okay, get hard. Stop speed.